In other news, the COVID-19 pandemic fueled a surge in anti-Asian violence in the United States, with a number of attacks occurring in New York City. The number of incidents in which Asians were targeted spiked over 350 percent between 2020 and 2021, according to the city's police department. The volume of anti-Asian hate crimes remains elevated, prompting some in the community to take action in an effort to ease safety concerns. William Denslow reports from New York. A rise in anti-Asian violence has fueled fears of a chilling effect among residents in Manhattan's Chinatown. We're trying to get back to normal. I think it feels more safe now that there's some people on the street. I'm, in the beginning of the pandemic, you could hear a coin drop and that there would be nobody on the street. So that was really extremely unsafe. I feel a little bit better now. But concerns remain. According to the New York Police Department, there were 139 reported anti-Asian hate crimes in the city in 2021. Last year, there were 83. And safety is a paramount concern for not only the residents, but for businesses, because um, we need to start bringing tourism back to the city. We need to start bringing uh, business back. Um, and uh, safety, safety is that number one concern. Brian Chin was Christina Yuna Lee's landlord. The 35-year-old Korean-American was killed by a man that followed her into her apartment in February last year. A homeless man was charged and police didn't call it a hate crime. But some say the vandalism of her memorial after her death was an act of hate. Chin has 16 cameras on his property. He says steps like this have become increasingly important over the past few years. Having security cameras not only um, you know, can, can really help secure convictions, it can provide safety. Community leaders are taking steps to install a more extensive network of security cameras across Manhattan's Chinatown. Several hundred cameras like this have been installed at key intersections in Chinatown. According to those behind this operation, it's already helping the police track down criminals. Wellington Chen helped spearhead these camera installations. About 18 months ago, he was nearly the victim of a knife attack and believes safety is crucial for the neighborhood's prosperity. He says many people are taking extra steps to protect themselves. Self-defense classes by uh, local martial artists that are teaching seniors how to uh, be vigilant, uh, the police community council meetings, um, and then the distribution of literature, the scam, the, uh, the, you know, the, the pickpocketing. And so there's a, there's a lot more awareness now. Many of the attacks in Chinatown are apparently random and unprovoked. Some blame the increased number of homeless shelters in the area. They, they do need help, but the problem is having all these uh, homeless shelters and, and, and rehab centers all, all in, in, in Chinatown is, 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 is not good. It's not, it's not really good. It's not fair for, for, for the people that, that live here. The number of people in the city's shelter system is up at record highs, intensifying debates about homelessness in the city. More substantive steps are now being taken to try and address the root causes of hate and bigotry. Public schools across New York City will teach Asian American history next school year, and efforts are underway to pass a bill to mandate its teaching across the state. It's a lot easier for people when they need a scapegoat to blame people in this case, Asian Americans, that they just don't know a whole lot about. And the only way to eradicate this kind of ignorance is through our public schools all throughout the states. But for now, the hope is the rise in attacks against Asians seen in recent years and the fear it's generated will soon be relegated to the history books. William Denslow, CNA, New York.